Praise the Lord, everyone. All right, welcome to uh, Sunday School here at Toma Pentecostal Assembly. My name is District Elder Darren Price, pastor here at Toma Pentecostal Assembly, located at 18571 Highway 131 here in Toma, Wisconsin. Welcome you to Sunday School. Amen. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. We're very, very thankful. Um, God has been so good to us. And uh, let me make sure I got my mic on. Yep. All right. Praise the Lord. And so we are uh, blessed, amen, to be here. Uh, have a wonderful lesson. Um, a lesson that is founded in the fourth chapter of the book of Luke, of St. Luke. And... Um, it really gives us some insight. There's so many jewels in this um, that you can see. And many questions that the world has are answered in this scripture um, as it relates to uh, strength in the Lord, um, blessings, right? And so uh, we're going to get into this. And before we do, uh, before I acknowledge people as they come on, we're going to have a word of prayer. So I'm going to ask that you would bow your head uh, with us, please. And remember, uh, Deaconess Lee, who's not feeling well in her body, we continue to pray for uh, Brad Holt, Brad Holt and uh, the Holt family, the entire family. Uh, we continue to pray for our, pray for our children uh, and grandchildren and grandchildren yet to come that are on their way. Uh, we thank God, amen, for, for all of his blessings and his tender mercy. So let us go before him. If you bow your head with me, please. Precious God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord God, amen, for your healing. We thank you, Lord God, amen, for the blessings, O God, of life this day. And now, Father, as we come before thee, O Lord, we ask that you would bless us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That, my God, as we read thy words, we come together, as we talk about you, as we magnify you, as we lift you up, Amen, my God. Bless, Lord God, each and every soul that is gathered, O oh God, with us. Amen. Those on Facebook, those in the sanctuary, those, O oh God, amen, Lord, on their jobs, wherever they might be. Bless them, God, we pray. Hold no good thing from them. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And now, Lord God, as you would bless me, Father, with clarity of thought and perfection of speech. Help me, Lord God, amen, as I read thy word, as we share. Amen, my God, amen as we dig into thy word, as we, oh God, mine these jewels, amen, which are your word, amen, my God, we just thank you and we praise you, for Lord, we can't live without you, there's absolutely nothing we can do without you, and so Lord, amen, we ask thy blessing today, and these things we ask in your marvelous and matchless and precious name, in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen, amen. all right, all right, praise the Lord, everybody. All right, so we have with us, amen, Sister Sharon Barclay, amen, uh, and Sister Barclay, you can get me your, if you can text me your mailing address, I will mail to you your end of year contribution statement. Uh, all of those who uh, contribute to the ministry, um, your uh, tithes and offering and free will giving are um, uh, a tax uh, exemption. So... Um, Anyone who is given to the ministry, uh, we have uh, your uh, tax uh, information, and you can uh, text me, and I will email that, or I'll mail it to you, uh, to your residence. So just make sure I have a, a, a current address for you. So if you have not received yours as of um, um, this um, uh, information I'm telling you, if you haven't received it yet, please uh, get me your address. Um, and I will get that out to you ASAP. All right. So uh, we have Sister Sharon Barclay. We have Deacon Richard Carrion. Amen. Um, God bless you, Deacon. Alvergia Lee. Amen. Deaconess Lee, who's on. Amen. You're going to be feeling better. Amen. As the day goes on, Deaconess Lee. Amen. In Jesus' name. Um, we have Deaconess uh, Vera Guyton. Uh, Sister Tam. Uh, Washington, amen. God bless you, Sister Washington. And we have Kathy DeCamp, amen. 
Um, love, love you. God bless you. Uh, good to have you on. Amen. This morning, uh, we have uh, Tomaha Jones with us. Amen. Uh, let's see. And Minister uh, Deacon Robert Fair. Amen. Deacon Fair. Minister Fair. We thank God for you. And there are others that are yet coming on. We'll try to acknowledge them as we go uh, and as we are in the lesson. Uh, so uh, if you would be so kind as to look at the um, lesson text, amen, today is um, the big idea is I will be led by the Spirit and surrender to God's call on my life. Now that's a big, that's a big idea. It's easier said than done, all right, to be led by the Spirit because um, we're talking about the Spirit of the Lord, but there's a whole lot of spirits out there that are leading folks. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but here we are focused on the Spirit and surrendering to God's call on our lives. Every soul that is born into this world, amen, has been born into this world for a purpose and for reason. And it's not to act a, act a fool or to clown. All right? Amen. You are, amen, God created you uh, and formed you so that he could not only bless you, but that you could bring honor and glory to his name. Amen. And, and uh, the late bishop... Um, Morrissey Golder was teaching on God years ago and, uh, and he said this and I agree with him uh, he asked the question he said well why did Jesus come why did God wrap himself in flesh why did he walk on earth and um, people had various you know answers you know, to redeem us and so forth and I, I agree with him because this is what he said he said, he came that we might know who God is. That, that, the simplicity of that, but he wanted, he wanted us to know who he is. It's important that you know who God is. And so many people don't know him. They won't even read his word. They won't read his Bible, yet they talk about him. And, and so how are you going to talk about somebody you don't know nothing about? And, and you lead people astray. I had a, a, a brief conversation. Someone was talking about, you know, that God will forgive you for everything now and in the future. Yeah, but you have to repent. You have to repent. You just can't keep sinning. Well, God, he's just merciful God. He's going to forgive me. You're going to go to hell living like that. That's where you're on your way to. And, and so uh, God is righteous. And because he is God, his love is righteous, his forgiveness is righteous, and his um, punishment is righteous. And he told us what's going to happen if you don't repent. If you don't repent of your sins, you're going to the lake. Now, and he made it plain. And, and by the way, don't get mad at me. Those are his words. <laughs> All right? So you don't get mad. You said, you said, you think. Ain't what I think. It's what God says. All right. Okay. Now, the focus verse is in Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. All right? And we're going to talk about that. And so the text is uh, found in chapter 4, verse 1 through 15. Uh, the truth about God. God provides the resources necessary for believers to fulfill their calling. Um, and he also establishes the standard so that you can fulfill your calling. The standard of how you get into right relationship to be used of God. Uh, so many people jump up, and that's why you have all these churches, these mega churches with these pastors that can't live right, 
because they weren't called. <laughs> they weren't called. I don't. But but elder, they got they got a thousand people in the in the service. I don't care. As, as the late Bishop Par, uh, Earl Parche said, "What that going to do when they see you in hell? A thousand people, and you're leading them to hell because you weren't called by God." And so, here's the key. And as we read this, you have to be in Christ Jesus in order to preach Christ Jesus. All right? Okay. So, um, we're going to begin, but we're going to uh, start uh, this lesson by turning to the book of Luke, chapter 4. And there are some things that, that, uh, that in here I thank the Lord uh, for uh, this scripture. It speaks to all of us. All right? Yes. Now, I, I do want to just mention, uh, as we read this, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to read it in its entirety. I'm not going to stop to comment, but, I, but then I'll go back. So I'm going to go through this slowly because there's so many things. I think you'll pick up on those jewels in here, uh, these, these anchor points in this scripture uh, lesson text. All right, so Luke uh, chapter 4, I'll begin reading at verse 1 in the Bible says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship, or shall serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from, ben, from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Now, uh, I want to spend some time here, and I believe we can extrapolate uh, and pontificate staying in these first 15 verses. I want to bring some things to your remembrance. I stopped at 13. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. All right. Amen. Thank you for that. All right. So there are three things that uh, the devil did here. Now, first, I want to, by definition of temptation, temptation is an enticement or an invitation to sin. That's a temptation, right? 
there are various uh, uh, definitions, but here this definition is an enticement and an invitation to sin. All right, because people use temptation differently. Well, well, I was I was tempted, you know, I was tempted to eat that chocolate cake. That's not really a temptation. Okay, that's a desire that you had of the flesh, and you try to let everybody know that you bypassed it, but yet you took some cheesecake home and devoured that. So, all right, so, so, so you get what I'm saying. But, but the temptation, what it is, it's an enticement, an invitation to sin. Now, I want to uh, talk about these three temptations. And I, is there anything that you noted while I read those that was one different from the other? And, and so, so we're going we're gonna to get into that, all right? But, but that's the question. And so many people in the world believe that because you have something, God gave it to you. All right, well, I, I'm a, we're going to read in the word. That ain't true. You know? Um, so so let, let, me just, let me just slow walk this, and then we'll, I'll, I'll bring those out. So Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, in verse 1, returned from Jordan, right? So he, he was filled with the Holy Ghost, and now he goes directly to the wilderness, being led by who? By the Spirit, all right? Into the wilderness. So, yeah, so he is led now to go from amongst people. He's completed the salvation. Watch this now the baptism, and fill with the Spirit. Now he is going into the wilderness. One might think uh, to be torn down, but he's going there to be strengthened. How we get strong, oh, thank you, Jesus. How we get strength in God is not by eating. How we get strength in God is by turning our plate down. It's the exact opposite. If you want to go high in God, you got to go low. If you want to receive something, you have to give. It, it's, it, that's how God operates. And so it's beautiful that he's demonstrating. So people, we, now we apostolics can't miss this. That, that once you are baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, that's when the work begins. That's when you really, amen, God begins to deal with you and strengthen you and get things out of you that you think and you thought you, you didn't think were in you, but to get them out of you so that he can use you in the way that he has called you to. So it's a process. Some folks, they want to they get baptized and, and, uh, and they get filled with the Holy Ghost and now they want to preach. <laughs> Woo! You know, I... Yeah, my grandmama said I could was a preacher, you know. And they want to, and then when the pastor tells them to sit and be taught, then they rebel. Then they leave the church, and now they go contaminate other folk. They haven't been taught, haven't been disciplined. They don't know the word. And so, so one of the keys, precious heart, uh, to walking with God, and I've asked the people, they've come here, I've, I've had conversations in my travels around the country, people talk about how they're doing this and establishing and how they're starting ministries. Well, we apostolics don't start anything. If, if, if God calls you to establish a church because you are establishing another church, you're not starting it. This was started in 33 AD. You ain't starting nothing new. So when people talk about this, I started this, I started that. I listen to them. And then I watch. And yeah, you did. You started, and it begins with an M. It's a mess. You can pack out every seat in a church. Precious heart, that's not challenging. All you got to do is just not tell the truth. Don't preach truth, and you'll pack them out. 
That's all. That, there's, no, that, there's nothing new about that. Tell people what they want to hear. Make them feel good about their sin. And never tell them about the temptation. And they'll follow you right to hell. Because don't nobody want to be told. Just tell me what I want to hear. Stay out of my stay out of my pocket, my bedroom. Just stay. Don't don't you the elder don't don't go there. What's wrong with me loving this this person? Well, the Bible says, yeah, but now you judging. No, I ain't judging. You, you testifying that you don't believe God. So you know I can't help you because he that come to God must first believe that he is. So you don't believe God. So you don't believe that he exists. So you're going to do what you want to do. I'm, I'm, I, I, it's all throughout the scripture. So you ain't hurting my feelings. I'm just trying to help you. And you don't have to live that way. All right. So now, so, so we see that in this scripture. Baptism in the Jordan, filled with the Holy Ghost. Now he is going into the wilderness to be strengthened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 2. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. All right? People say, well, he drank. It's a 40-day fast. It's 40 days of not eating anything. Did he drink? Didn't say that he did. Didn't say that he did. Okay. 40 days. But don't you go out there trying to fast for 40 days. Okay? In fact, as my pastor uh, taught me, if you're going to go beyond three days, you and I need to talk. All right? We know what, what's going on because, all right? So, all right, that's just a little extra uh, there. Now, here's where we're going to get into it. And this is where we really need to, that's why I say we're just going to stay in the word because it, 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 the Lord speaks to us so clearly here. Verse three, and the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So what's the devil doing here? He's tempting him, but how is he tempting? In Right, in the area of his hunger, right, to satisfy that fleshly desire to eat. If we're going to fast, you're going to be tempted to eat. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> the folks that ain't never, ever, Brought you dinner to your house. The day you decide and determine to fast, they come and knock on your door. I made you this. Or I brought us some. We could have lunch together. You have to deny. It. Well, no. And my boss did. I knew it was the devil. But my boss did that to me. Came into my office and wanted me to go to lunch. I said, no. No, I appreciate it, sir. No, come on with us. Come on. I said, I'm fasting. Well, you can still eat. Ooh, no, sir. And, and every time I talked to them like that, they hated me the more. But I'm about something bigger than this. In fact, I'm even praying for you. <laughs> and you're trying to get me to, see? All right, so, so that's going to happen. So get ready for it, right? Get ready for it. Now listen to how Jesus responds to the temptation, to the enticement, all right? And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's how we're going to live. We don't live through our belly. We live through the word of God. Jesus spoke it just that plain. The word of God, amen, will sustain you and keep you no matter what. 
All right. Here we go. Let's see if that rascal feet, he's going to let him go after this. As we leave him alone. And the devil, verse 5, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. <laughs> yes. So people talk about, now, so let me put it where you can get it. Um, rappers, entertainers, movie stars with nasty, filthy mouths, ungodly lifestyles, RuPaul, people like that, men that dress up as women, got money, live in opulent homes. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean a thing. God ain't in that stuff. I don't care who you are. The Bible here, amen, speaks plainly to the fact that the devil can give you stuff too and give people kingdoms. Are you hearing me? People over in Saudi Arabia, well, all them people over in Saudi Arabia, everybody lives in that country. They got Mercedes Benz and they got all these houses and stuff. Yeah, God didn't give it to them. Because they don't worship him. So the devil will give you stuff to worship him. Not the God of heaven. These rappers standing around, the kings of comedy standing around, you know, in the back praying and then go out and blaspheme God. And everybody talk about, well, yeah, I want, you know, I want, how can I be successful? You ain't say the word right. How can I be successful like you? You want to be like them? All these singers died early deaths. Because when the devil gives you something, he always requires a dead sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you your soul. You're going to have to give something up. Oh, well, Elder, you're talking about, yeah, okay, but I just want to be a professional basketball player, a football player. When the devil entices you with money and fame, it don't matter how he comes. You better seek the Lord first. Your response is, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. There's a whole lot of folk, even from, look, from the White House to the outhouse. Folk want fame. They want to be you know, TikTok, Facebook. They want to be famous. They want to be seen of people. And then when they found out when, that, that you can get money for being outrageous and nasty and profane, then they get profane and they get nasty. I felt I can be elected to office if I lie, then I become a good liar. I tell you when the sun comes up in the east, Amen. Uh, and, and, and sets in the West. I tell you that it rises in the West and sets in the East. And I keep telling you that knowing it's a lie. But if you'll believe me and put me where I want to be, I've got there on a lie. God ain't in it. This scripture, when, when the Lord revealed to me and, and really, and in my mind's eye, when, when, let me just, let me just point this out. And, and I believe you'll see it. Look at verse 5. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. Now there, so, so he's elevating, right? He can only elevate so far. 
So he takes them up to a mountain. All right? You got folks that love the mountains. You got people that hike up to the mountains. You got people who risk their life to go to, uh, what's that? Mount Everest. Every day, striving to get to the mountain. For what? You can't live there. But what do you want to see? You want to view it from the mountaintop. So this is what he does in his attempt to entice God. People want to be elevated. I don't know if you caught that or not. People want to be elevated. They want to be put up. Okay. He showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. Now, and he showed him this in a moment of time. All of the kingdoms of the world. The kingdoms, well, what, what defines a kingdom? People, buildings, land, structures, right? Anything within it that defines it as a kingdom. I'll put it where you can get it. It'd be like, going up to a mountain and overseeing the whole United States and saying you can have all of this, everything within it, including the people. So enticing him with women or whatever it else it was, right? Okay, everything. And this is what he says again, watch, verse six. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee See, he's the prince of the air. The devil got power. He can give wealth. Oh, yes, he can. He's, he, right, right here, we know it. So everybody, look, so many folks think that only God is, can bless and only God can give. Look, that's why we seek the Lord first in all things. When Abram uh, came back and he defeated the kings in the veil, amen, and when the king of Sodom came, amen, to gas Abraham up, he said, look, you can keep all the stuff, just give me the people, and Abram said, I won't take a thread of a shoelace from you, because then you'll say that you made me rich. That's our attitude as saints. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he addeth no sorrow to it. We'll be blessed by God and him only. Because you're going to have to give something up to, be, uh, to get the devil to give you something. And what are you going to have to give him? Huh? It's right here. What are you going to have to give him? You got to worship him. Look at verse 7. If thou therefore will, what? Worship. worship me. All shall be thine. <laughs> Just worship me. Which means don't worship God. Now you better put your seatbelts on for this. Because I know some of y'all got some folks that you watch on TV and, and that you really love and enjoy. But there are a lot of folks that don't preach Jesus. And if you ain't preaching Jesus, you ain't worshiping Jesus. You're just like, and we read this in the book of Acts, you're like those Pharisees and those Sadducees that commanded Peter and John, don't you preach in that name. Don't you mention his name. Don't you, and we're going to beat you. And you go away, and don't you mention his name. I'm going to read that scripture again here in verse 7. I, you need to get this, because there's a whole lot of folk on TV that don't preach Jesus. And they got cars. They got big homes. They got airplanes and jets. And you think God is blessing them. Huh. <laughs> They're worshiping Satan. Because look, let me, let me just be very clear. There is no gray area when it comes to God. 
You're either with him or you're not. You're for him or you're not. You're in or you're out. You're saved or you're not. It's not, you can't hang out in this gray area like Catholicism says is this place out here where purgatory where you can hang out. The Bible don't say that and there's no such place. So he says to him in verse 7, and you need to hold on to this. People come along, I've had people come up to me, approach me, want to do business with me, and I listen to them speak, and I realize I don't want anything to do with those people. Their mouth is profane. Oh, they got money. Big houses want me to come up. Uh, one one uh, gentleman says, look, come on up to my house. You know, I want to show you my house. I'm not impressed by people's homes. I mean, you know, it's a house. Appreciate it. But I know who can give that to you, too. I mean, I, I'll be praying around somebody's home. But, but there are some people that that's how they validate themselves. All right? There's nothing wrong with you sharing your blessings with other folks. Don't get me wrong there. But I'm talking about folks that you know ain't right. Now, look at this. Verse 7 again. If thou therefore... No, let me back up. Verse 6. Just so you get the context. And then we'll move on. Because I gotta, I'm going to get to the punchline, all right, which is going to prove what I'm just reading to you in verses 5 and 6. And the Lord Jesus is being very, very plain here with us in regard to this. And I know we're not very popular because we don't join hands with everybody who claims to be a Christian. Verse 6. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. The glory of them. Oh, I get it. So I'll be the most popular person in the kingdom. I'll get all of their, they'll glorify me. Elected officials. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. People kissing their rings because they got billions of dollars. Why well, never seen? And death is the great equalizer, precious heart. The the richest man around in our day, when we was young, was the was the guy. He was a, a movie guy, too. Um, in fact, I think he was married to that blonde woman. Uh, anyway, but he built planes and all this kind of stuff. Uh, they had a movie about him. Anyway, but all his money, Howard Hughes, lost his mind, got everything he wanted. He wanted all the fame and lost his mind. Yeah. And people fought over the crumbs, and he never got anything or enjoyed anything that he ever made. Yeah. Yeah. Went to his long home, just like everybody else. You come in this world empty, that's how you leave him. You can act like you all that in a bag of chips, but you're not. All right. So he says, and I will give thee and the glory of them. All right. So not only the kingdom, but if you, if you worship me, I, I, they'll worship you. You have all the glory. You'll be the man. For that is delivered unto me. I can do it. I can make it happen. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt. Here's all you got to do. Worship me. And all shall be thine. That's it. Just worship me. It's all yours. Grow up poor. You grow up and you don't have nothing. And somebody offer you something. The first thing you ask them, even somebody who ain't all that streetwise says, well, what's the, what's the catch? What's the hitch in this offer? Well, no, no, nothing. All you got to do is, you know, they tell, all they have to tell you, just, just take some of your clothes off. That's all. Not, you don't have to get, just, and just let's take some pictures. That's all. And what they do with it, so then they give them a little money. And when they give them a little money, they, they maybe give them 200, but they got 1,000 here. 
and they give them the 200 that they promised. Well, what's up? Well, you just take everything off. Mm -hmm. And then you get this. Yeah. Temptation. Mm -hmm. Money. If you pour and not grounded in Jesus, if you're poor or even if you got a little something or if you got a lot and you're not grounded, you will compromise your integrity to get more. Why is it that politicians keep wanting to be elected? Because they got more by being and they, the eye is not full. It never is. When you ain't grounded in Jesus, you'll do whatever and justify it. Okay? All right, now, so now I'm going to get to the punchline, all right? Uh, we're going we're gonna to move, move through this. Now, so verse 7, as I said, if thou therefore, so all you got to do is worship the devil. But it's not no satanic stuff. I'm not going to church during football season. I got bought, I bought season tickets. I ain't gave a dime to the church, but I bought $30,000 in season football tickets. So every Sunday, that's where I'm at. You have worshipped other than God. I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you. Verse 8, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind, uh, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. See, so we don't see us staying out of church as worshiping some other god or deity, woman, man, car, house, all right? But then Jesus says that, and him only shall thou serve. So you got to look at the definitions of the word serve and to worship, all right? So my point is this. There are a whole lot of folks who worship things and serve people. And so you, you really have to be careful. Um, people wanting you to compromise your beliefs, all right, um, because it's, all, it's not that important. Well, you can go to church some other time. I need you to do this. And the first time you do it, you feel guilt and remorse, you repent. Second time, they entice you with food or with money, and now it gets a little bit easier. And before, and now it's just easy to stay out. It's just easier for me to work and not even come to church. So you can serve your job. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord's talking to me, talking to you, talking to all of us. We can serve things and you can serve people yes, Lord. and you can worship things and you can worship people so jesus hit him both thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve yes, worship and serving hand in hand i try to separate them but i can't look at this in verse nine and he brought him to jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down from hence for it is written he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone now in the first two temptations what did Satan do What did the devil do? Y'all out there too, I hope you're still tuned in. What did the devil do in the first two temptations? He appealed to his want for food, his hunger. Because don't, look, look, uh, I was taught as a kid, don't you ever tell somebody what you'll never eat. Because you might get that to that point where you be eating that possum. Mm-hmm. 
that muskrat, I did. I found myself eating muskrat. It was pretty good, too, to be honest with you, until they reached in there and pulled the bones out, and I saw what it was. But anyway, so he appealed to his, 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 his flesh, his hunger, that basic need, right? And then what did he do? Then he took, he elevated him and offered, which everybody wants. Yes, power, ego. I want fame. I want the glory. Athletes will tell you when they get in the stadiums, you know, what is it that they miss? I miss the roar, the cheer of the fans now, because out here, don't nobody cheer for me as I go pump gas at Quick Trip. Don't nobody cheer for me. Right? But now look at this. So, so this is where, this is what I'm telling you. See, Jesus, I'm telling you, the Lord is marvelous. This is why I am so adamant and, and I get so offended when people in these huge churches or even little churches, when they don't preach Jesus. And this, this scripture here that I just read proves that. So in the first two temptations, Satan addressed the flesh of being hunger and then the desire of being needed or elevated above one's peers or above, above everybody. Power and fame and, and glory and having all the women if you're a man and having all the men if you're a woman. And you know all these movie stars, right? They got more men than they got shoes. Same with the men. Nasty folk. They ain't even married. And people want to ask them about their relationship. How's your relationship? Well, how's fornicating going for you so far? Fornicate? Who you call a fornicate? Well, you're not married. You're sleeping with this guy. You ain't even divorced from dude. And you're not one to be emulated. God ain't in that. Yeah, you, know, you judging folks. No, I'm, just, I'm Bible all day. All right, now watch. Here's what I want to bring out. In verse 9, and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Jesus in the spirit, right? Okay. Satan is a spirit. Okay. He takes him to Jerusalem where his name is. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just, and that would, uh, the Lord declared oh, that my name will be in this house. This is my, my house shall be the house of prayer. My name is here. So he takes him, yet now, I mean, that's yet to happen, but the devil don't know that. He don't know everything. All right? And he can't read your mind. And he set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. How the devil attacked me when I was first filled with the Holy Ghost and had to ride 11 hours back from Erie, Pennsylvania, back home. He kept telling me, don't you tell nobody you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't you tell nobody. And so um, he keeps, um, he doubts and, and tries to get you to doubt who you are in God. It's a tactic. All right? Once you have been baptized, in, filled with the Holy Ghost, it's a tactic for him to come along and say you ain't. But if you are, so this is what he says. Um, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Now, this is the part that I wanted to bring out to you. The differences in these three temptations. Here, who's quoting this scripture? For it is written. No, Satan is. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Satan is, right? This is Satan speaking. For it is written. He shall give his angels charge over thee. 
I'm not moved nor am I impressed with somebody who can quote scripture and they the devil. But you got a whole lot of folk following the devil because he can quote scripture. I'll let that set for a minute. If you're not preaching Jesus, his death, burial, resurrection, and the salvation plan according to the book of Acts, as Jesus gave it to his apostles to preach to all men. Jesus ain't walking through no wall to give you a special revelation on how to be saved. And if you don't believe me, then go back and read the baptism of Jesus where he went down in water, came up, got filled with the Holy Ghost, then went to the wilderness. Now you begin to understand. You have to go the same way. And I'm not impressed and nor should you be moved by people who quote scripture but don't preach Jesus. Come on here. It's right here. It's right here. And you know how many folks died because of misinterpreting this scripture? These so-called snake handlers? Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. <laughs> and they're tempting God by picking up snakes. The devil is a liar. And you use in scripture. <laughs> you got to know that you know that you know. Look, there's so many false preachers, ungodly folk, can't live right from 12 o'clock to 12.01. They can't get it right. Because they won't preach Jesus. They won't. They won't preach abstinence and, and repentance of sin because they can't live right. They don't know who Jesus is. So here's the punchline. Satan didn't really know who he was. Read it for yourself. We just read it. Stop giving him all the credit. Like he's smarter than everybody else. He's a tempter. Oh, what's a tempter? One who entices and invites people to sin. He hasn't changed. He's the same devil when he got cast out. Same devil when he hit the ground. He's going to be the same devil going to the pit. Same devil. And we got so many folks that are sitting in churches today and they're not preaching Jesus. His death, burial, and resurrection, they're not telling you that you got to live a holy, sanctified life. They're telling you, just do the best you can just, you know, you sin, we're all sinners, and, you know, we're all failures and all that. What God do you serve? Your God of failure? Huh? Your little G? Your excuse? You like being tempted. You like it. You like the invitation to sin. You like drinking. You like smoking. You like cussing. You like lying. You like it. But here, our Jesus, the Jesus, the God of the Bible, whose name is Jesus, tells us that you don't have to live that way. And you rebuke that thing through the word. You rebuke that temptation through the word and through prayer and through fasting. That's how you rebuke. That's how you keep that demon. He's going he's gonna, he gonna to let you go for a season. And that's what happens to people in the church. They come in, they cry, they fall out before God, they feel good, amen, they know, they learn how to repent, amen, and they may even get baptized in Jesus and then go right back out into the world. You know why? Because it ain't that bad now. 
Because he left you for a season. He got something for you. Because he don't want to see you unhappy. He wants to see you dead in your sin. That's how Satan wants you. Oh, the devil, all kind of things, you know, the devil's just the devil, devil. That's right. Keep, keep calling on his name and he'll keep showing up. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, and, and right here is the key, one of the many keys to living a victorious life in Jesus. And first, you got to get out from underneath ungodly teaching. If they're not, if they're telling you that baptism is an outward expression of an inward feeling, you better run. You better come on over here. You better, if you're in, if you're in Beloit, you better get to Beloit Pentecostal Assembly. If you're in Appleton, you better run to Appleton Pentecostal Assembly. If you're in Madison, you better run to Madison Pentecostal Assembly. You better run. So, propelled into purpose was the Sunday school lesson. And all of the jewels of lining up in Jesus to be used by Jesus for his ministry. It's not, it's not your ministry. I find people very bold to put their name on it. Be leery of people who put their name on the ministry because it ain't theirs. When their name is on it, they make it theirs. So they start leaving stuff out. Late Bishop uh, Morris E. Golder said that there was a, a, a well-renowned minister. This is in the early 80s. A well-known minister, very popular, seen on TV and all that stuff. He instructed that all of the hymnal books have all of the blood songs removed. All of them. Because they found it offensive to his congregation. This is a bloody book. It's all about the blood. But he don't want to offend nobody. He preaches on Sundays. He's got a packed out house congregation. Going to hell. It ain't worth it. All the kingdoms in the world are not worth denying Jesus. No amount of money, no amount of money, no fame, no fortune, is worth denying Jesus and his salvation plan which they hijacked which they lied about just accept him just accept the Lord and you're saved receive him into your heart your wicked abominable nasty heart no need to get baptized in Jesus name that's an outward expression of an inward feeling. If you want to, you can, but it's not required. It is required. Everything Jesus did, we have to do. Come on here. And that's Bible all day. All right, saints. Amen. Elder one. Well, I, I pray that we are propelled into purpose <laughs> through the reading of these scriptures. But make no mistake about it. Satan tempted Jesus. He's going to tempt you. He's going to promise you stuff to compromise. He promised Jesus to compromise. Jesus wouldn't do it. He rebuked him with the word. He, he wanted, if thou be the son of God, cast yourself down. He wanted him to prove that you are. No need. No need. I am that I am. He is the I am. And, and so we thank God uh, for 
this lesson. You go back and you mine the jewels that are in these uh, 1 through 14, 1 through 15 verses. There's so many jewels there. You got to know what voice is talking to you. And if Jesus ain't in it, better get to stepping. I don't care whose daddy, grandmama, uncle who started that church, started it. <laughs> Whoever started that fire, you better run. That's a fact. It, playtime is over. Stop trying to uh, receive everything that God has on your terms. It's not your salvation plan. It's his. It's his heaven you're trying to get to. Stop acting like you can get in any old way you want. You can't. And, and it's not me who's saying it. It's Jesus said it. John chapter 3 with Nicodemus. Except to be born again, you won't see it. And unless you're born of the, of the water and of the spirit, which Jesus was and which all the apostles were, you're not going to get in. So if you're not going to see it and you're not getting in it, you ain't going to be nowhere around it. You're going to the pit. And it ain't a place you're going to be able to hang out with the devil and be playing spades and all this kind of nonsense. He's going to the pit. And there's no hierarchy in hell. That's his reward. And all his imps, all them, all them demons. And, and just let me tell you, just let me just bear with me for a minute. Let me just tell you who all is going to be there. Every dope fiend spirit. Everybody, every dope fiend, but can't get no dope. Every fornicator, but you won't be able to fornicate. Every liar. Every cheat, every thief, but there'll be nothing to steal there. Just torment. Every murderer, they'll all be constantly in torment. Murder, wanting to murder, but nobody to murder because you're in hell. It'll, it's, it's a godless place. There'll be no salvation there. No hope there. None. Every wicked spirit that walks the face of this earth is going to be in that pit. Every one of them. And is not, and God had not appointed us to wrath. God had not intended. He didn't wake you up this morning so you could live a hellish life. He didn't wake you up this morning for you to turn your back on him. You got to fight for the salvation. You got to earnestly contend for the faith. You got to push through how you feel. You got to. You got to work out your own soul salvation. You have to. You got to push. I know sometimes you don't feel like coming to church. You don't feel it. But you got to get there. You got to get the prayer. You got to get there. I got to get there. There's going to come a time, precious heart, when you won't be able to. It's like I tell people, no, don't get upset. Look, I brushed my teeth with Crest since I was a kid. Hated dentistry as a child. Loved it as a young man. Loved going to the dentist. I, all the brushing, all the dentistry, I got it one day, they're going to fall out my mouth if the Lord lets me live that long. It's going to happen. One day, if the Lord tarries, we're going to our long home. You're going to die. How you die is up to you. When you die is up to God. Get that taken care of right now. If you don't know the Lord Jesus in the parting of your sins the Bible says that you must repent be godly sorry for the sins that you have committed and turn your back on them and start walking toward God and you must be baptized in water in the name of Jesus for the remitting of your sins 
and God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. That constitutes the new birth. Yes, that is the salvation plan as Jesus gave it to the apostles. It ain't never changed. Never. And this is not up for some private interpretation. Amen. Read your Bible. You cannot get saved by skipping over the book of Acts. It don't work. Amen. It's not God's plan. All right, we thank the Lord, amen, for all of you, amen, that have joined us, amen, this morning, amen. Sister Lorenza Davis came on, amen. Deacon Eric Beckham, amen. God bless you. Um, praise the Lord. Oh, Brother Steve Smith, amen, was on. All right, need to see you. Amen. God bless you. All right, amen. These are these are this this message is important. And Sister Deborah Mason is on with us as well. Thank God for you. So um, you can't help but be passionate about the salvation plan. Time is winding up. One minute to midnight. The Lord can come back at any time, any moment now, and we must be ready. And he's coming back for his church. Well, how do you get in his church? You have to be born into his church. Born of the water and of the spirit. That's the only way you're getting into his church. All right. Amen. Love you. Don't want to get into the message uh, too much today, but uh, join us, amen, back here at 1035, amen, for a midday service. We thank God for you, and we love you. Look, if, if, if your feelings are hurt by the things that I said, let us talk. But, you know, so many people are going to be lost because they want Jesus on their terms. And that won't happen when you're trying to get to his heaven, to live with him eternally. That's, that's just not going to work. All right? And there, there are not 50 different, as Oprah Winfrey said, there's many ways to God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's what Satan told our mother Eve in the garden. That's a lie. But there are people tell, we serve the same God. No, we don't. We do not serve the same God. The Bible says there are gods many. So we don't all serve the one true God. And if you can't get your mouth straight, in other words, you cussing all the time and you lying and you drinking, you think God is a is a beer and talking about stupid stuff as you get the drunker you get. The Bible says that no drunkard shall be in heaven. Nobody, no drunkard, no drug addict. Nobody. The, you know, it's his heaven. And if you think that you can live your life that way, you won't get in. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, by the way, this was a happy message, you know. Uh, amen. Everybody all right? Amen to God. All right. We love you to life. See you back here at 1035. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Well, I, I, I saw that as a kid, that, that scripture. I said, wait a minute. The devil's quoting the scripture to Jesus in the temple. He's standing, he's on the temple at the church, at the seat of their worship. This is before his earthly ministry. It was like, wow, Lord, are you telling me? Yeah, I'm telling you, Darren, there's devils preaching in these churches and I'm not in it. Lord Jesus. And they get mad at you. Well, you tell them in love, you know. It's like people that T.D. Jakes on him. I listen. Some, sometimes I listen. I can only take folks for a couple minutes. <laughs> you know, and, and but if you listen and and you see that they're preaching to people's emotions. Uh, T.D. Jakes has books out about feelings. 
Well, your feelings will put you in the grave. Uh, there's a whole lot of people in jail about, oh, I felt I had to, yeah, you felt you had to go over there. That's how you brought a case. <laughs> it's not biblically centered. And, and they package it so. And in order for me to keep you, I have to somehow, you know, to, to you all, I can be really, but out there to them, there's too many of them. <laughs> so I have to kind of rope them all in, so I got to preach to their feelings. Oh then I go back and I preach to you, my family, differently. That's what they do. And that's how, that's how you can walk off stage and feel like you've done something, because now the young folks will never walk up on you. You ain't passed it on to people. How many people did Jesus pass it? Hmm. Hmm. Now he fed 25,000. You don't count how many he passed it. Because many of them came against their bread and fruit. And remember they took him to an edge and he's gonna throw him off the cliff? I love that scripture. But Jesus, Jesus became and walked right by him. They were still looking for him. He walked right by him. Did you get that? Do you know what I want? That on the wooden network, uh, Charles H. Harris the third was our guy from the DAW. I listened to him uh, and I shook my head. I don't hear nothing about Jesus. I hear about God. You have to fight for it. The grace of it. They're not everybody. I don't care about size of the church. I don't care about your title in the world that you hold. If you ain't preaching Jesus, you lost. You don't have the title. Somebody said, Well, you won't you won't get asked to preach many places. That's all right. That's all right. I don't just preach the truth, baby. I don't preach the truth. <laughs> and you are too. We preach the truth to people. Mm -hmm. That's why you ain't got a, a, a cackle of friends all around you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you're not with somebody sick. Yeah, oh, you yeah. know, nobody's sick. Now they're going to call you because they're going to get you in a prayer for them now. Somebody's going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Not while they live in there. Thank you. 